when he comes again. Now, the pagan Greek philosophy taught that the soul was immortal. Strabo was a, was a, a Greek, but he loved Rome, he loved, and, he, and he traveled. He wrote one of the first major geography textbooks, traveled all across Europe, traveled down into Africa, traveled to Asia, and he died. He was 87 when he died, which was old for that period of time. He died in 24 AD, so he died during the days of Jesus. And as he was traveling, he looked back and reflected on the Old Testament that teaches that death is but a sleep until Jesus comes. And uh, he talked about those who invented the fables. And here's what he said, and this is a classic scholarly work. He says, they invent fables also after the manner of Plato on the immortality of the soul and on the punishments in Hades and other things of this kind. So Strabo got it right. He said, you know, uh, there is a drift, a departure from what the Bible prophets taught. And uh, there are those that are teaching after the manner of Plato. And they are teaching about the immortality of the soul and the fact that people are eternally burnt in hell. And so he, he got it, this brilliant mind. He was one of the most, uh, most brilliant scholars of his generation. Justin Martyr, who lived in the second century from 100 AD to 165, warned Christians. And this is what he said. If you have fallen in with some who are called Christians, but who do not admit this truth of the resurrection and venture to blaspheme the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob, who say that there is no resurrection of the dead and that their souls, when they die, are taken to heaven, do not imagine that they're Christians. Now, this is an amazing statement. You have to put the two statements together. See, Strabo points back to the Old Testament. He says, you know, there are some now are coming up with fables about this idea of the immortality of the soul. And Justin Martyr in the second century says that, uh, that, that it is, is not the basic essence of Christianity to believe that you have this immortal soul. He said, this is coming from Greek philosophy. This is coming from Egypt. Now, spiritualism teaches that the soul is immortal. And that's the very heart of spiritualism philosophy. Now, once you go that direction, the devil can use ideas about death to deceive us. Because once you have the idea that the soul is immortal, that it lives on, then it's possible for that soul to communicate with the living, and therefore, there, your mind is very open to the deceptions of Satan. Now, notice, Job chapter 7, verse 9. When a person dies, can they ever communicate with the living again? Job 7, verse 9. As the cloud disappears and vanishes away, so he who goes down to the grave, next four words, everybody, what are they? Does not, Does not come up. Do they ever return to their house? Certainly not. Job 16, 22, when a few years are come, then I shall go the way whence I shall what? Not, not return. return. One night I was speaking in Legaspi City in the Philippines. And as I was speaking there in the Philippines, uh, in Biko University, a large auditorium, and every night I'd go speak, one night a typhoon came up. It was a terrible typhoon. Category three or four, palm trees were bending over, waters flooding the streets, and people said, are you gonna go to the auditorium? I said, there's gonna be somebody that comes tonight. I know they are, I have to go there. So I went, large auditorium, sat about, I don't know, 1,500 people or so, it was dark, all the lights were out in the city. There were no lights at all, and I made my way through some flashlight, you know, through the waters, the wind is blowing. I go to the auditorium, couldn't see a thing. So I got up, no microphone, of course. Everything is dark, the wind is blowing, and the shutters are banging back and forth. So I said, is there anybody here tonight? And about 60 voices in a 1500 auditorium say, oh yeah, we're here, pastor, yeah, we're here, pastor. And I said, well, you got to go home. I just heard on the radio, and I said, I'm not speaking tonight. I just heard on the radio, it's going to be up to a Category 4 hurricane, uh, typhoon. The roads are going to be washed out. If you don't get out of here right now, we're in trouble. Now, my topic that night, can you believe it? You know what my topic was? I was speaking on the thousand-year millennium period in the Bible, Revelation 20. We're going to talk about it here. And my topic was a 1,000-year world blackout predicted. And so I said, you go home, and 60 voices yell back, we're not going home, Pastor. Your topic is a thousand-year world blackout, and we think it began tonight, Pastor. We're not going home anyplace. But you know, that night, um, there was a, 
lieutenant in the Filipino army who had been coming to my meetings. And he wasn't there that night. But later he came back when the weather calmed down. And I had talked about the fact that when you die, you don't come back to your house. When you die, you rest until the coming of Jesus. His wife had died about five years before. And during the tornado, he came back and he was quite shaken. And he said, I went to bed that night, and as I was lying on my bed, I looked up and I saw this beautiful apparition. He said it was a form of my wife. She looked more beautiful than you could possibly imagine. She was about 25 years old in all this amazing beauty. And she reached out to me and she said, darling, I love you, come and embrace me. And he said, I looked up and I said, you are not my wife. You are an evil angel masquerading as my wife. In the name of Jesus Christ, be gone. And he said, before my eyes, she turned to a hideous, black, inky form and disappeared. Wow. At the name of Jesus, even all the evil angels flee. Yeah. But it's so important to understand what happens when you die. You know, here's what an English spiritualist, Oliver Lodge, said, and I'll show you what happened to Oliver Lodge. There is no death in the graveyard. This is what Oliver Lodge said. I have frequent talks with the dead. I cannot doubt that people live after death because I frequently talk with them. Once your mind is open to the immortal soul, it is open then to the deepest, darkest spiritualism. Now, here's what happened to Oliver Lodge. He was a world-renowned physicist. He was an ardent proponent of communication with the dead. His own son, Raymond, was killed in action in World War I on September 14, 1915. And Oliver Lodge and his wife communicated with a spiritualist medium. They began to receive messages from their son. And this is where it led them. Contrary to the teaching of the Bible, he denied the bodily resurrection of Jesus. He came to the point where he no longer believed Jesus rose from the dead. He also rejected for the idea that, that believers will rest or sleep until the second coming of Christ. He denies the second coming of Jesus. It led him down a path of absolute, total rejection of the Bible. Now look, you think that's not happening today? Here is the leading research group in America today called the Barna Group. They report. Seven million teens have encountered a so-called angel, demon, or some other supernatural being. This is in America today. More than two million of our teens say that they've communicated with a dead person. And nearly two million youth claim that they have psychic powers. You see, if we are not clear on what happens when you die, you are, your mind is left open to the devil's deceptions and to be chained in the darkness of the evil one. The Bible teaches death is asleep. The believer is as secure if they were sleeping in the arms of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So when we die, it's nothing to be feared. If you are committed to Christ, you rest in his love and rest in his grace. You rest in his goodness. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52, Paul says, behold, I tell you a mystery. What does he tell us, everybody? A mystery, but it's a mystery no longer because he solves the riddle of death. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all what? Sleep. sleep, but we shall all be changed. So death is like a sleep. sleep. We shall not all sleep, but we'll all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. changed. So death is but a sleep. It's like for a moment. When you go to sleep, do you think, oh, one hour passed, uh, two hour passed. If you're sleeping, you don't think that, right? What happens when you're sleeping? The next thing you know, that alarm is going off, and you say, hey, I didn't know it, it's time for work already, and you get up, right? My wife and I have been traveling the world for, oh, I don't know now, 45, 50 years. And when our children were young, when my son was really young, we used to bring him to meetings, and um, my wife would sit on the side of the platform at times, and she would be over there off to the side. You couldn't see her. She'd have a blanket on the floor. And my little boy, four, five, six years old, he would fall asleep. And mommy then would leave him and go back and take care of the literature and the books and so forth. Now, it's okay if my son at five falls asleep in my meeting, but watch out. If <laughs> so anyway, he would, he would fall asleep. And I'd be preaching, and I'd preach, and he would come over, and I'd go visit with people. And then at the end of the meeting, I'd pick up my little boy in my arms and would take him home. We were in New England at the time, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island, and sometimes it would be winter and it would really snow. The road would be icy. 
and uh, be taking my boy home in our car would be skidding. Taking the boy home and um, would big trailer trucks would come at us. He wouldn't know anything of that, would he? I would take him home and bring him into the warm house and put him in the crib and he would be sleeping there. He'd wake up in the morning and I'd come in the morning with my wife and say, son, it's time to get up. And he'd look up and say, daddy, you still preaching? I said, I preach long, but not that long, son. You know? See, he didn't know anything about that, right? He was just resting securely. We need not fear dad. If we are in the, if, if, if the grace of Christ fills our life, He's given us the promise of the resurrection morning. Amen. And what does Paul say? In a moment, we close our eyes and it's like we're resting in the arms of Jesus. It's like Jesus is holding us in his arms. We just go to sleep. That's